Welcome to the Yo Brother Podcast. My host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. How's it going, Dan? Good, man. Hey, uh, you know, when we're recording this episode, yeah, uh, it is May 12th, 2024. I just want to give a shout out to all the mother, all the mothers out there. Mothers. All you mothers out there <laughs> that haven't subscribed to the Yo Brother Podcast yet. We're talking to you, you mothers. <laughs> Anyways, uh, happy we're a year. motherly show. I by mean, the time you, I mean, one of our first interview was with our mother. So, right. By the way, normally this is a indication of me being furious and starting to fume, not to be confused with Furioso, which is coming out soon. But I just got a little sun this weekend, so it, you know, I look. I thought you little, were embarrassed about the show. <laughs> I look a little bit red, but. Uh, <laughs> And, and I'm using sunscreen these days, too. So anyways, if I look a little shiny and red, that's why. And I, I am look. looking, you know, like you know what's, a corpse. Right. Because you, there has little, not been sun here. Mike's like a vampire. You know, he only comes out at night. He only comes out at night. The lean and hungry type. It's funny. I would say, like, like I look shiny and, and red because, uh, you know, it leads me into a an unplanned transition, which is to talk about it. <laughs> apples and that's relevant to this episode which is of course about uh a, a fairly famous foursome that was on a label uh called apple uh matter of fact if you look just beyond mike's shoulder you'll see the fab four the one and only the beatles the beatles i see now you didn't tell me you were you were getting a fab four poster i like that it's been up there before yeah and here i am like you know but the, the mafia poster behind me, but uh, I don't recall seeing that. I I put it up when I did a short about music oh. it was on TikTok, and when we we just interviewed a a, a new intern, and it was up. Oh, it, it just totally I'm went over you my head. Yeah. yeah, I thought you might so, notice it. So we're back to do. Uh, we're going to do an episode on the recently released, re-released, I guess, remastered, right? Documentary Correct. on the Beatles called Let It Be, which was directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg. Now, a couple of years ago, we did an episode, which I got to, I, if I do say so myself, one of our best episodes I think we've ever done on, yeah, Mike's holding it up now, the Beatles Get Back documentary, which was by Peter Jackson. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the footage, in that documentary, of course, was sourced from this, especially like, the rooftop footage, correct? Which Let yes. It Be was famous for. That's right. Yeah. Now, Let It Be again, Michael Lindsay Hogg. Now, Michael Lindsay Hogg, couple of things here. One, a happy belated birthday to Michael Lindsay Hogg, who uh, his birthday was May 5th, mm. actually. He's born in 1940. So, what is he, 84 now? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, Let It Be originally came out in uh, May of 1970, May 13th, 1970. Right. It was just released in its remastered form on Disney Plus May 8th, 2024. Right, this week. So, so a lot to celebrate. Now, what I did not know, uh, as I went back and looked at uh, some of his background, this guy has done some major, major documentaries. Now, he's probably done almost every documentary on the Rolling Stones you could think of. Yeah. Right? But two that stood out to me was the concert in Central Park with Simon and Garfunkel, which was mm -hmm. great, a great uh, music documentary or performance, rather. A concert film, not a documentary. Um, and he did the Paul Simon Graceland concert which I right. didn't realize. So those were two that, that stood great. out to me. Um, the and killer if, is why is it these don't show up on, you know, Blu-ray at least like mm. let it be, for instance, has been, you know, 1970. And yet you're holding up a sweet collector's right. version of get back, which I'm disappointed. It wasn't 4k. It's only Blu-ray. I have a couple others I'll point out, but later, but the quality on that is phenomenal. Yeah, like, so, well, you know, since you're talking about quality. Eight I, days a week. Yeah, this is the tour, eight days a week, the touring years by Ron Howard. Correct. This is the two disc set, which is the one you want to get. The footage, Dan, it looks like we just shot it yesterday with a 4K camera. It's unreal. Yet, I didn't have time to watch that. I was I was planning to try to get that in before we recorded, but um 
But you said on the episode we did with Get Back, you said Get Back even edged that out as good as that was. It's so good. Now, if you haven't seen Get Back on Disney Plus, it's a long haul. Yes, it's it's based over three days, isn't it? Yeah, it's three parts, right? Three, three episodes, parts. right? So and, you're the, and we watched it together. Yeah, but ironically. you're talking about almost seven hours of footage, probably. It's a lot of footage, you know, with just the three. And there's episodes. no extras on the box set, which, well. The, the film, it's the, the documentary itself is an extra, right? It it's, is. It's one it big is. extra. And yeah. uh, in fact, in the beginning of this remastered version of Let It Be, which I don't recall ever seeing back in the day, I might have, but I don't re recall, um, is an introduction with, of course, Peter Jackson interviewing Michael Lindsay Hogg. Now, Michael Lindsay Hogg is all over the original, you know, the Get Back documentary. Correct. And uh, and you do see him in, in Let It Be a little bit, not as much, but you do see him right. in there. Um, so it was interesting to see him now, present day. The interview that they were doing was in 2023, last year in April, mm -hmm. um, that they must have recorded and used for the you know the introduction of this, which it's titled "Get Back to Let It Be." Correct, and which was interesting. Michael Lindsay Hogg describes "Get Back" as the the father to right. Let It Be. Which I think is a, an apt description. And yeah. And I'll just say up front if you've seen Get Back, you really don't need to see this. No, but there is a couple of, of interesting, like the rooftop footage, which yes. I was excited for and Get Back. Yeah. We kind of see it in a different light. First of all, we don't see them replaying the songs, which they mm -hmm. did several right. times. We only see one playthrough. Right. So it looks like a more cohesive concert. Yeah. And you, but it really and you wasn't. Don't, and you don't get a lot of the, you're not getting like you did in Get Back, a lot of what was going on down, right. by, down below on the street with the cops, with well, the bobbies, with the right? bobbies, the bobbies. Uh, you do see that playing out, but you, you know, in Get Back, you have the audio. Correct. And you hear all that's going on with these people kind of saying, look, this is getting obnoxious. They're, you know, disrupting businesses and so forth. Correct. So it, it's not quite as uh, impactful. But uh, yeah, I agree. It was it's funny you say about the rooftop. One of the things this is a, a minor detail, but again, just a testament to the quality was when they first get out there and they're kind of getting their their footing mm -hmm. on the rooftop. You In this one, I noticed I didn't see it and get back as much. The shaky boards yeah. that they yeah. had up there. And right. George was all over that, like no big deal. And right. those things were like, oh, yet when God. they in get back, it was they talked about it. They're like, are we gonna go through this thing? Or yeah, we you might know. fall through the roof. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so you see some of that in the periphery, but it just wasn't the focus as it wasn't get back. And really, if anything, this one is you know, just kind of much more focused on the music and the writing of these songs and the creation of this album that would become Let It Be. Right. Um, we had no idea. Although in the interview at the beginning, mm -hmm. Michael Lindsay Hogg says, well, you know, George should just quit. He didn't think Let It Be got a fair shake when mm. it was released because, you know, the Beatles had broken up in 72 right mm. after it. There was... Uh, after the rooftop, I think that was their last performance. That was, together. that was, so yeah. he kind of brings that up about George quitting, although it doesn't go into it, like get back does. Yeah. And I think the only, the only other time that they were together again as a foursome was, I believe something to do with the recording of Abbey road where they came in to cut something or whatever. And that was basically it because Shortly after that, uh, it was like April of 1970 is when they, the kind of the breakup gets announced, Correct. which kind of spiraled out of control from just some stuff that was maybe, I don't know, misquoted in the press or whatever. And it just like there was a there was a quote from Paul mm -hmm. that 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 was in the press. And, and I think that led to the others kind of going, well, if he's saying that, you know, it's just a lot of kind of. And it Paul, seemed like stuff that got taken out of context. Paul also had just done his first solo album. Mm -hmm. 
And they took that as, I think, a slight. I didn't John as well around that same time. No, didn't... it wasn't. No. It wasn't until a year later or so. Yeah. And then John disappeared, really, after mm-hmm. Imagine. And finally, the Plastic Ono band was formed. And Yeah. Now, Yoko was uh, it's much more prominent in this film, she I think. She was. She was in Get Back. Yeah. But still not it, it wasn't portrayed in a way that was sort of a hindrance or problematic but no like but they did kind of you know when you saw focus her, on her it was almost like here's the villain no, it's and she of. wasn't the villain she wasn't you know, she wasn't. she's not what caused these guys no. were locked in a room day after day writing mm-hmm. songs mm-hmm. they're gonna get like when we saw george quit i remember my jaw dropped yeah. When we were watching Get Back, right? You know, he wrote a note. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, went to this, did this, quit the Beatles. You know, right. like it was a shopping list. Now that I felt, you know, was a little bit more prominent, maybe in in Let It Be, where, you know, so uh, some of the backstory of people that that may not know. If you're a Beatles fan, you'd know all this. But uh, Brian Epstein, right, or uh, their 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 manager who died very young. He was only thirty two. Yeah, that really it, it seemed to be the impetus. Yeah, what would what would eventually become their kind of their their breakup because they were just these this wayward band of misfits at that point. He kind of was the glue that kept that all together. And Paul right? is the one that picked up the leadership slack, and I think that caused some animosity. Oh, without question, and and then. You know, you were talking about George. You can see, as I was starting to say in this one, you know, he, like there's that inner interplay between he and Paul that you see in Get Back too. Where and you talked about it on that episode we did, where he's like, George is feeling like he's being condescended to and not given enough respect for his own contributions. Right? You it, like there's times where he say, well, it's it's really just uh, three simple chords and there's nothing real technical here in this song, but. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll play whatever you want me to play. Right. And that back and forth where Paul's like, I'm just trying, I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm right. Just trying- right. And it so was that- much longer and let it be. It was much longer. Yeah. I thought that was and, and you saw Paul saying, I, you know, I don't want you to feel bad about it. That, that, those weren't the words he used, but right. he goes, I'm just making a suggestion, mm-hmm. which ironically, I think there's a collector's edition of let it be that's floating around on DVD. And I think it's an outtake, but you tell me. Mm. Um, Don't let me down. You know the the famous song that uh, John Leno wrote to Yoko Ono. John Leno. Did I Jay say Leno? Leno? Yeah. Did I say Leno? Yeah, John John Leno. On the John Tonight Lennon show. wrote that song for her, and there's a sequence, and I don't think it's in the Disney plus version. I think it's in the extras and Paul basically reframes the opening because it starts. Don't let me down. And he says it like four, he only said it once originally. And then they go into the song Mm -hmm. and Paul's like, you know what? If you say it twice and then we come in, I think, you know, and that reworked Mm -hmm. the whole song. I feel like that was in get back, but not let it be. Yeah. I you know, it I was familiar. familiar. It is familiar. Right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know familiar. if it was or not. But that, you know, that seemed more prominent here like I said was was this kind of rift that was that was starting uh between George and Paul and you know, it, and then it, you could see again the the sort of kismet between Oh wow, look at that. We Is that Happy new, Mother's Day or a something? A new graphic. I I didn't even know it was my birthday. I, was that so kismet? Excited, that but look at this is this is birthday balloons. How is I that guess. birthday balloons? I don't know. <laughs> we and find the, and the thrills out just on the keep on coming. <laughs> you say it's your birthday. <laughs> but uh, and then you know the kismet between Paul and John, of course, is still there. They seem to just really be in step with each other. You know. You know, these are two kids who were 15 and 16, two cats, and they wrote 300 songs when they were that age. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? 
and the songs go on to be, you know, one of the things that, um, was it one after nine Oh nine, one of those that they wrote when they were like, I think so. And and Paul kind of makes, cause they, well, they, they, they're kind of, you know, they, they got a couple of weeks to write an album basically. So they're pulling out all the stops and like, Hey, we, every day they had to have a hit song. Yeah. And at one point they start to, you know, kind of, think about digging into those archives hey there's all these songs that we might have thought they were really simplistic at the time but maybe they'd work peter jackson i i loved the intro where he says we know the words and when you're watching get that's right or you're watching this you're like I know what it is here. It is John. Let me tell you what the words are. Like John forgets the words during "Don't Let Me Down." That's very funny. Blue, Which black, bleak, re- blue. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's really funny for that brief moment. You know, you see George giggling, and mm-hmm. you know they're kind of having fun. Yeah, it's it's really hard to. I was thinking about that while watching it. I'm like, geez, it's, we can't. We don't have that reference, right? We but there there's these songs are so imprinted in our in our mind. Right. And, and so yeah, that's very interesting. And then for the last song, the, a guy had to hold up the lyrics because John didn't remember them. Is that like Dig a Pony or something? I don't know which one it was. Yeah, it was it, I, I was. forget the tune, but yeah. I got a feeling is such a great tune on that right. album. And I really like that on the rooftop too, because they uh, we did we get we got much more on the rooftop. I felt definitely like, you got get back, don't let me down. I've got a feeling one after nine oh nine, dig a pony, and then there was like a like a get back refrain or something. I, yeah, they kind of went back to it or whatever. And and like I said, in in get back, we saw yeah. them do multiple takes mm-hmm. of get back and other songs. So let me ask you, so. Because I I, met, I said it at the top, I kind of gave my, a statement about it, and you seem to I don't know if you disagree, but if if you've seen Get Back or you haven't, for that matter, so what? How, would you recommend this in addition to that? And if so, what's what's the draw? What's the difference? I would because I think you you see a little more in depth mm. with some of the, um, especially the rooftop. If you're a fan of the rooftop. You want let it be because it's kind of mm-hmm. edited in a way that flows much better than get back. Yeah. Cause, cause Peter Jackson was focusing, like you said, on, they were getting ready to arrest them mm-hmm. and the way each one reacted to it was kind of interesting. Like Ringo was just cold. He's uh, like, they, I mean, it looked real cold up there. Yeah. yeah. And John at one point said, I don't think I can play chords anymore. It's just too damn cold. Mm. But Paul was just like focused. He didn't care about the cops. He wasn't mm-hmm. even paying it. He's like, we're going to do this. Right. And it's going to be good. And it was interesting, the kind of reiterating of this whole idea that by this time they had I, with the exception of Paul, right? They they had pretty much grown tired of the touring and the live performances yeah. um, until they there was that TV special, that New Year's Eve thing or whatever it was where they were performing. And they kind of said, hey, you know what? This feels good again, which kind of prompted this, I think, or was sort of, again, an early impetus for this. Um, but, you no know, like- doubt- no doubt in my mind that if the tragedy of John Lennon's killing yeah. didn't happen, we would have seen more Beatles records. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No question in my mind. I think they needed a break from each other. We find and get and get back that they're yeah. spending hours upon hours in a restroom. Right. Because it's the only place they could get away. Yeah. And these guys are in their mid twenties, late twenties at that point, whatever. So, and they, you know, and they're starting, they've got relationships and they've got families. Some of them, you know, you see some of the kids, you know, running around the studio. Yeah. There was a lot. I I thought Heather McCartney. Yeah, You saw Linda for about two seconds in this. Right. Right. He like totally cut her out. She wasn't in it hardly at all. Yeah. The quality is equally stunning. With this Stunning. one, I, I love that opening bit that is both in Get Back and Let It Be with that kind of drum head 
cover or whatever. Yeah. And the guy picks it up. He picks it up and walks away with it. It's 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 a very cool shot. But um, now, what about the 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 rotten apple? Right. So Mike would had talked. We were talking about this off air, and you brought up the fact that you know there's this very opening shot where Paul's at the piano. And there's a, uh, you know, a half eaten green apple on the piano. I think it was just coincidence. You think so? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But, but, but a great coincidence, you know, right? you can't help but think that's a metaphor. Yeah. For what's going on. Right. Right. With that. But, you know, again, the focus was not as much on the strife in the group in this one as it was the music and like you said the, the the rooftop performance if you're a fan of that then you definitely would want to get this remastered version because i mean you can see like the grain on the on the floorboards up there on the roof it's it's crazy yeah and like you said uh, george is bouncing around and those things are creaking and moving and it's just and wild. he was probably the most jaded at that point mm-hmm. yet he really looked like he was having fun he really did uh, you know yeah it it Again, they none of that is is as revealed or as much the focus as it is in Get Back, right? Which probably makes this a little bit more enjoyable. It's just really about them and the yeah. the, the genius that that was the Beatles in a relatively short period of time. I know to produce. I, I mean, it still blows my mind. It, it, I mean, there's still things I hear that I'm like, I've never heard that before. Yeah, the catalog is so deep. Not yeah. to mention. I'm sure there's still a, a deep catalog of things that have never surfaced, you know, or been released. Now, have you ever watched the Beatle movies? Like Hard Day's Night and Help and all that? Speaking of. Yeah. You, you led me right yeah. into it. Right. You do that thing again. I, it would maybe go a little something like Something this. like this. Yeah. I'm holding up a Hard Day's Night criterion. And when you open it, the Beautiful first thing set. you notice is is right here <laughs> um i what? i can't do this the noticing? 4k the okay. 4k okay this yeah, is yeah. the only 4k disc of the beatles that's a nice set hard day's night yeah it, it is and i have the other version behind me but i wasn't really you know i grew up those movies were on it, mm-hmm. it felt like every month there was a new one yellow yeah. submarine etc right I really wasn't a big fan of those other than the music, Mm -hmm. you know, their wit and, you know, it just, it didn't work on me. It was was very art house type stuff, you know, at that, at that point. And yeah, um, but yeah, I've never really sat. I, I I had yellow submarine at one point, believe it or not, Sergeant pepper, you know, that kind of stuff, but, um, help, help. Yep. Uh, So April 10th, 1970 is quoted as, you know, when they broke up, although the the formal dissolution of it was the group, 72, I think, 74, right? 74. Oh, wow. Because of all the, you know, the legalities and the back and forth. With and I that. told you, I actually went to a performance of Beatlemania, which mm-hmm. was brand new at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that was in the 70s. That was 78 mm-hmm. or 79. So. Yeah, they- and you brought up the other day, we were talking about it uh, leading up to this, was the the British invasion that used to be at Epcot. Yes. Out in that UK pavilion, which was just a, a joy to watch them. And the, really fun. I that wish was like they in brought the, those guys back. It was like in the late 90s when they were really at the height over there. That was that was the go-to show, was the British, you know, British invasion. And then they kind of revamped it, and I never, I haven't liked it since. Is that, then. I mean, I thought the pandemic it went away because of the pandemic. Well, yeah, but it, when they came back, it was like a group right. that wasn't dressed up or trying to be the Beatles. Correct. And then they would just play all kinds of other sort of, you know, British pop, British rock. Cover tunes. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I it was enjoyable. I like it. There's there's still some things that, that are worth checking it out. But I again, I feel like if you've seen Get Back, you've, you've seen you've seen Let It Be you know, for the most part, because for the most again, part, that's the footage, uh, some of the hundreds the, of hours of footage that was used. Correct. The nice thing, if, if you don't want to go in for the, say you're not a big Beatles fan, which mm-hmm. it's like, what? Mm-hmm. If you're not a big Beatles fan, this is a hard day's night. The, the director's cut is 90 minutes. You're mm-hmm. in and out. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a quick watch. 
we saw Sir Paul, what, 91, 92, it had to be right around there. Maybe even 1990, that was. Yeah. In Orlando. That was, you know, we were, like you say, we were sitting up in the clouds. But I joked and was, I was, and I'm, and I'm dead serious. We were closer to the blimp mm-hmm. above I think that's true. than we were to Paul McCartney on stage. <laughs> but it was still Paul live. So that's all it that was. It was still Paul and Linda was with him. And yeah. it was fun. I have to say, so anything else about Let It Be that, that you want to comment on? or No, I, I no. think, you know, if you got Disney Plus, give it a watch. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So one thing re- kind of related to this is I, I you're going you're gonna to love this. I Last night, uh, and, and I had mentioned this to you before, but there was this the documentary that was coming, docuseries that was coming to Hulu about uh, Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. And it, it 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 got released like April 26th, I think, on Hulu. It's a four-part series. Each episode is about an hour and change. I watched the entire thing last night. So I watched about five hours. And what's it called? It's called Thank You, Good Night. Okay. And it's it's a docuseries on Bon Jovi. And I wanted to mention it here, the relevance of again, a document, a music documentary, but what I, I would highly recommend it because you know me, I don't go in for those long marathons. No. But it was one of those where like I was on the fourth episode of the, you know, the fourth of four and I had maybe 30 minutes left. I said, I'll just watch it. Tomorrow. No reason I, I couldn't wait and finish it today. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't stop watching it. So mm-hmm. I just finished it. And um, what was interesting about it, whether you're a Bon Jovi fan or not, I've seen him in concert multiple times um with the original lineup Mm -hmm. is i saw him before they they i've never seen him yeah and and they put on a great live show um but it it's what's awesome about it is it's chronicling the band's history because this is like the 40th year of the band now being together from like 1984 i guess um but while they're doing that and it's you know again in these four chapters they're also current day over the last, oh, four or five, six years just prior to COVID following Bon Jovi. Because um, he has some health issues now. He did he? with his voice. Yeah. yeah. Now there's this, all these videos on TikTok that you can see, right? And I've shared a few of them with you mm-hmm. um, of people just ripping to shreds singers who don't sound like they used to when they were 20. Right. right. Some of them are, I'm sure, are bogus. I'm sure. And I'm sure some of them are legitimate. And some of them were Bon Jovi. You know, a, right. a lot of them are Motley Crue, like Vince Neil and Motley Crue get no no love out there on TikTok. But <laughs> it's easy, right, to get out there and like bash people on social media. Sure. You, you know, it, it's such a cesspool. But um, but I was so moved by the vulnerability that John Bon Jovi shows by allowing the cameras to film his struggle with, you know, it's a really, it's really this story about just getting older mm. and the struggle is real folks. Mike and I will tell you, it is like every year that ticks by, it gets a little harder and a little harder mm-hmm. and then you discover something new that wasn't there before. And with him, a guy that, you know, a rock guy, a sex symbol, all of this to, to lose his instrument, right. Struggle with that. Not know if he's ever going to get it back. That's pretty scary. So it shows him going through all these different, like natural therapies and things like that. Then he eventually gets surgery and it kind of culminates in the fourth chapter with him a year after surgery, he gets in a studio, I think on his property, probably with his group, current day group, Mm-hmm. And they start running through some songs and it ends shortly after that. So you don't really know how much is he back? Is he going to be able to tour? Can he hit those notes again or not? But, well, not that long ago, yeah. within the last three months, he was on stage and brought Bruce up. That's right. And they That's sang right. together. And yes. That wasn't that long ago. But I mean, there's people around him. This guy, Obi O'Brien, who is a producer he's worked with for years and his wife, Dorothea, who he's been with since like forever, mm-hmm. they both said to him at certain times, what it was is there's a segment where I think it's like 2022, maybe they were rehearsing 
at the Meadowlands where we've been to see Bruce in the past, they're rehearsing there for a couple of weeks to, to go and perform 15 shows just to kind of get back because COVID delayed them from getting back out there like a lot of other artists or whatever. And he comes off stage at one point and his wife's like, that it wasn't good. Like that wasn't great. You imagine that? Like, it's just, yeah. it's, you know, again, to allow yourself to be that vulnerable on, on film, I thought was pretty impressive. So I just wanted to bring it up just to recommend it as another docuseries. If you're interested. Yeah. In it sounds like something I'd be interested. In. You know, it's, it's on fun. Hulu. When I was in high school, I saw Bruce for the first time, which you failed to believe me for yes. whatever reason. I'm not going to call any BS, but the girls that, uh, it was all girls and me, you know, so of course I was going to go. I really didn't know his music that well, but, and this is before he blew up, mm -hmm. but the girls told me, they said the only one who even is in the same ballpark when it comes to live performing is John Bon Jovi. Yeah. And you and know, it's interesting. Him. well, he was getting all kinds of shit and his, was it, two years ago or something, their tour was the number one selling tour. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and it is pretty amazing how they kept themselves relevant through all the decades, especially when there's a focus on when Seattle grunge came in with Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all that. And how do these guys like, how do you survive? Did. And they still yeah. kept putting out a hit every year. They had a hit record. Yeah. Um, so very impressive. And Bruce is featured in the docuseries too. Oh, okay. Good. He's in it as well. Yeah. And it's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah. It's called okay. thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So not to turn this into a Bon Jovi episode, but I thought it was worth recommending. So, yeah. well, there you go, Mike, let it be directed by Michael Lindsay hogg, uh, who did a fabulous job on it. I mean, the footage he got was amazing and he, maybe he's right. Maybe it did get short shrift when it first came out. Mm hmm for the reasons you mentioned, but, um, you know, and, and the I other one, it. if you, if yeah. you've seen get back and Eight you want, uh, uh, or you want something different, like say, let it be is too much of the same. Yeah. Get eight days a week. Trust yes. me. Right. It, it, this is so good. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw eight this before days. get back. Yeah. And I thought there's no way mm -hmm. they're going to top that footage. Because, you know, obviously this is touring. So we see Shea Stadium. Right. We see them in all sorts of venues. But, you know, get it back, did it. Ed Topped Sullivan. It. Ed Sullivan. That's right. Yeah. Right. They came over here, what, 1964, I think it was June, July. Yeah. They waited till they had a number one hit. That's right. In the U.S. Smart. Before Very smart. Yeah. Everybody got a podcast. <laughs> Everybody got to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Everybody right. hit the thumbs up. Yeah, everybody hit the subscribe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for another uh, episode of the Old Brother Podcast. Let it be, again, directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg. You can catch it now on Disney+. Plus. Um, but, yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's two thumbs up for Let It Be. You know? Yeah. Again, I, I would recommend Get Back over Let It Be, but um, equally enjoyable. So check it. And it's a much quicker and easier uh, right. one. You can digest. do this. Yeah, it's uh, 90 One minutes, whatever it is. Done. Yeah. All right, folks, going to do it for another episode of the Old Brother Podcast. i your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.